Tips from the ER, masks. Did you know that masks protect not only you, but everyone around you? That's right, motherfuckers. I don't care if having it on feels like you can't breathe. What if we all died? Don't you get it? It's not about you, you selfish fuck. It's about the greater good. It's about making sure grandma makes it to Christmas. I'm sure at one point it was odd for humans to start wearing shirts, but at this point I'd settle for looking at your ugly nipples than to have to see you without a mask. No pants, no mask, no service. So next time you're leaving your house, don't be a selfish prick. Put the damn mask on. Tips from the ER. What's happening in the ERs right now? We are all out of motherfucking space. Every admitted patient who is supposed to move out of the ER is currently stuck because every bed in the hospital is currently occupied by sick ass patients. The ER is more backed up than your colon after a weekend of binging Fat Tuesdays and buffets in Vegas. On top of that, every patient in the ER is COVID positive. You want to know what's separating those patients from me and you if you come into the ER? Curtains. Motherfucking curtains! We are surrounded by COVID patients and we are being protected by the all-powerful barrier of a fucking curtain. If this wasn't a sign to stay the fuck at home and put the damn mask on, I don't know what you're waiting for. Death? Tips from the ER. Vomiting and diarrhea. If I have one more person try to show me a bag of their vomit or a picture of their poop, I am going to lose my goddamn mind. I don't want to see it. Nobody in the hospital wants to see it. I called Jesus. He also said he doesn't want to see it. You want to know the first thing I do when you motherfuckers walk in with a bag of barf? I throw it away. Get you a new bag. Why? Because that shit is gross. Just describe it to us. We really only need to know if it's bloody or if it looks like wet coffee grounds, which is also blood. Blood equals bad. Same thing with your poops. Stop trying to show me pictures of whatever disgusting swamp monster came out of your bunghole. We would appreciate a one word description, bloody or watery. We don't need a high resolution photo of it through your phone. And here's the thing, if it's what you came into the ER for, then we will, for better or for worse, eventually see it live and in real time. Tips from the ER, we are closed. Did you know that the ERs can temporarily close and refuse to see patients? Not anyone that walks in, of course. We have to see every single one of you, motherfuckers. But the ERs can refuse ambulance patients. This is called ER diversion. This is when an ER is at capacity and must divert ambulances to other hospitals because we simply do not have the manpower or resources to safely take care of another patient. If this gets out of hand and hospitals get backed up, ambulances will have no choice but to wait in the hallways for an ER bed to open up. What does this mean? If you get into a highway accident and go flying out of your car, but you manage to get to your phone to call 911, they'll tell you, sorry, we got no ambulances. They're all waiting to drop off COVID patients at the ER. Call an Uber or ask the tow truck guy. Why is it always a guy? Do you want to know the last time this crazy scenario happened in the ER? Yesterday. Yesterday, motherfuckers, we ran out of ambulances. Tips from the ER, COVID vaccine. Guess who just got their vaccination? That's right, motherfuckers. It's been exactly seven hours, and since then, I've grown a toe on my butt, a nipple on my tongue, and a monkey has crawled out my ear. Best part is, I get two shots for the price of one. That's right. Any COVID vaccine worth taking right now comes with two shots, and my second shot comes 21 days after my first. Think of it like taking a shot of your favorite drink. The first one tells your body to wake up. The second one tells your body, now it's really time to party. And no, I don't mean physically. Also, to all you anti-vaxxers out there who keep raising a stink about how you don't believe in the vaccine, don't you worry your cute little ass. We weren't going to give you any in the first place. There's barely enough for the people on the front line trying to fight this pandemic, and you think we're going to share it with you and your non-believing, non-mask-wearing face? Ha! Not a chance. Tips from the ER. High blood pressures. What do you consider to be a high blood pressure? I know the textbook says you should be as close as possible to 120 over 80, but everyone is different. What's high for you might not be high for someone else. If you come into the ER, we won't sound the alarms until you're at least in the 180s. And even then, it's not like you're gonna have emergency surgery to fix a high blood pressure. You get medications. Why? Because if the pressures in your pipes are too high, they could burst, cause a stroke. But I've seen patients happily discharged and walk out of the ER with pressures in the 170s. If you're worried about your blood pressure, document it. And then document it again. And then again the next day. This will tell you whether or not it is high because of a single stressful moment or if it's time to see your primary care doctor about managing it at home. 
Because here's the thing, blood pressures can and will fluctuate with emotions. If you're stressed out about your blood pressure, guess what it's gonna do, motherfuckers? Raise your blood pressure. Tips from the ER. Seasonal depression. We're at that time of the year where suicidal thoughts, depression, and anxiety are at an all-time high in the ERs, and for good reason. Christmas and New Year's has a great way of reminding people who are alone that it fucking sucks to be alone. Add to that, the days got colder, we get less sunlight, loved ones are dying at a rate faster than you've ever seen in your lifetime, and we've been mandated to stay inside and isolate. Girls are showing out on TikTok because they got nowhere else to go for people to look at them. I've seen more skin on social media this year than a women's beach volleyball team. Humans by nature need to connect, and when we can't, we go crazy. Motherfuckers end up in the ER because we take this problem seriously, and they got nowhere else to turn to. People need someone to acknowledge their problems and not downplay their problems. So check on your neighbors. Call your cousin. Say hi to your good-for-nothing brother. Give him a reason to turn off the porn. Connect, motherfuckers, even if virtually. And have a merry fucking Christmas. Tips from the ER. Good Samaritan. Ladies and gentlemen, stop calling 911 on the drunk, passed out, homeless person. There is nothing we are going to do for them in the ER but wait for them to sober up, which they could do perfectly fine exactly where you found them. If they take up a spot in the ER, we're going to have to listen to your whiny ass complain all night about why it's taking so long to see a doctor. Here's a secret I've been dying to tell you motherfuckers. Being passed out drunk in a 7-Eleven's parking lot was their goal. They achieved it. Applaud them, pat them on the back, and then leave them the fuck alone. You really want to be a good Samaritan? Check if they're breathing. Maybe sit them up. Yeah, that's right. Get in there. Take some responsibility. And if they aren't bleeding out profusely, walk away, motherfuckers. Walk away. Tips from the ER. COVID-19 mRNA vaccine. No, the COVID vaccine did not give me the virus. It gave me an mRNA, which are the instructions to make a piece of the virus. You don't get the whole blueprint, motherfucker. That would be stupid. You get instructions to make a piece, and that piece is not enough to infect you, but it's enough for your body to go, fuck this noise. I don't like this shit at all. Destroy that motherfucker. And if we ever see anything like that again, it will be dead on arrival. The vaccine puts your body on high alert. It's like getting the game plan to your enemy's attack. Are you trying to lose this game? If not, then you want that vaccine, motherfucker. Tips from the ER. No eating. Are you upset with us because we said you can't eat anything? I'm so silly, I should have explained why. When you come into the ERs, we look for emergencies that need to be resolved. And sometimes they can only be resolved with surgery. And since we're not in some sadistic horror movie, we're gonna make sure you don't feel any cutting by knocking you unconscious with anesthesia. Anesthesia temporarily paralyzes your muscles so you have no reflexes. Crazy, right? Now imagine if you've just had some of your grandma's famous gumbo soup, but you need emergency surgery. That soup is gonna go to waste because it's gonna creep out of your stomach, up your throat, down your windpipe, and into your lungs. We all know that feeling when food goes down the wrong pipe, right? We have to cough like crazy to get it out of there. But except this time, you can't cough. Muscles are paralyzed. No reflexes, remember? What happens when you can't get food out of your lungs? You're gonna choke, and then you're gonna die. Now why would you want this to happen to you? We certainly don't. No eating in the ERs, motherfuckers. 